First up, I wouldn't normally do a shout out because it's not the end of the month yet, but Lego sister and brother Minecraft lost their entire channel when their phone burned out, and now they've started a new one. So I thought it was kind of important to get the news out to his old subscribers. I'll link the channel in the description if I don't forget like the idiot I constantly am. So I know this isn't Revenge of the Fallen, like what people voted for in the poll last time, but I did say that there would be a part two to the Beast Machines one. Though this isn't exactly the part two I envisioned when I said that. I more meant that I was going to roast all the characters I'd already roasted again, but with better pictures this time. But no, this time I'm going to do the ones I didn't do the first time, as I really only covered the main characters and then touched on the Viacons. Once again, let me be clear here, because there are people who seem to get kind of upset every time I do one of these. This is a roast. I am mocking this stuff in good fun. This isn't meant to be any real evaluation or critical commentary on the series itself. Itself, I'm just trying to crack jokes. I plan to eventually cover G1 and Beast Wars, and if you know me, Beast Wars is like my favorite thing ever. I will be making fun of what I truly love just as much as anything else. I'm not trying to be unfair, so keep that in mind because I want to make you laugh, not irritate you. And introducing the new and improved Perspective and Patreon, now with perks. Or perk, at least. I will hold votes on what reviews my patrons want to see in the upcoming weeks. Depending on the tier of subscription, each patron will receive a number of votes. Starting at one vote with Grunt, each tier up from there gains half a vote. That way, the highest tiers of patronage aren't completely drowning out the lower ones in voting power, ending in a total of three votes for Battlefield Commanders. Two half votes obviously combine to make a full one, so two scouts voting at 1.5 votes per scout totals up to three votes. I can't promise that there will be a vote every week, as sometimes there are videos that need to come out when they are pre-slated. You know, stuff like current figures that people really want reviews on have to take precedence. But I will do my best to make at least a few votes a month. So now you guys can get at least something for your patronage, and I'm still trying to actively come up with more perks for you guys to get. Now let's just put these last few Beast Machines characters out of their misery, because every moment they live is clearly agony. Megatron. You know, I honestly didn't go over him last time because Megatron's design is just the Beast Wars design, and I'll eventually be making fun of that when I get around to Beast Wars. Best not to burn my jokes about him now before I actually cover the series he's from, you know? Somehow, I completely forgot that yes, this was his true form, but he spent most of the show going around as Captain Curtain. I didn't know they made cloth on Cybertron. How did they make cloth on Cybertron? I know this series wants to lie to you and tell you that Cybertron is in fact an organic world, but that's buried under like half a mile of metal. Where did they get the components for cloth? Huh. I just realized. How the fuck did no one realize that Cybertron was built on top of dirt? The earthy core of the planet is not that deep beneath the surface, and there are literal roads to it. Are we seriously supposed to believe that just no one walked down that far? Not only as a part of their job, but like in the 30 million years of life every Cybertronian is capable of, no one got bored and just thought, I wonder how deep I can go. What was I talking about? Alright, what exactly is the point of putting a fire grate over your mouth, dude? That's not armor unless he expects to take a punch to the face while strapped up to his computer chair. On a planet with no one on it because until yesterday, he killed everyone there. I want to point out that this guy wants to purge Cybertron of beast modes, which is something Cybertron didn't have. Hell, it's even reinforced in this show that Cybertronians didn't normally have beast modes, as Night Scream was accidentally cursed with his in an underdeveloped accident. And it was super weird that it happened. So Megatron, be inventing problems to have here. I want to draw your attention to these arms. These are not his arms. They are a part of his sick robot gaming chair. He has at least one arm with a real hand on the end, and not having hands never stopped anyone else in this show before, so why did he decide that he needed to not use that one ever? This is like having perfectly good hands but putting on a straight jacket and duct taping two grabby sticks to your shoulders. That really peels the menace off Megatron, doesn't it? Then let's rip into the Viacons for real this time. Man, what kind of a cursed existence do both Thrust and Jetstorm live? Like Thrust has to spend his whole life trying to balance on a unicycle like the clown he is. Meanwhile, Jetstorm can just never land. If he wants to have a lay down, he has to face plant from like 10 feet off the ground. And I don't know if Tankor has it any better. Sure, he can stand on his own just fine, but he lives his whole life with just pinky thumb. Imagine that. Imagine trying to pick up a drink with just pinky thumb. Imagine trying to turn a doorknob with just pinky thumb. Great job inventing the perfect alternative to organics there, Megatron. You designed the robot equivalent of fish with two assholes who can never stop moving or they eat shit, and one guy who can't make his way through a non-handicapped accessible door. The Maximals can defeat him by just putting round knobs on every entrance to their base. And don't even get me started on Obsidian and Stryka, because Obsidian is really, really fucking cool. I mean, uh, Scorpion Tail, how's he supposed to land with that? I actually have my original Obsidian toy. I suppose I do have a question. Why does the show model both faux form and shell form in the animation when the toy didn't? The toy had an obvious and cool alt mode lined up for him, ready to go, and the show had all the kibble set up for it in robot mode, and yet it feels like they just didn't do that purely to screw with the audience. I mean, I feel like this whole show was made to screw with the audience. What other reason would they have making everyone else uglier than Sin? Ugly to the point where the toys could not sell, and it forced Hasbro to cut plans for Transtech, which is the show we actually deserved. I love how I made the joke last time that Beast Machines looked like rejected Cenobite concepts from Hellraiser, and then lo and behold, while editing that video, I found concept art proving that's exactly what they are. 
This is official concept art, people. Official art of Black Arachnia in bondage gear with her skin literally flayed off. She was literally designed to look like a sex demon from a horror movie. At what point do you stop and go, we're making a show for kids, should we maybe tone this down a little? And what caused the showrunners to blow right past that without noticing? You know, as much affection as I have for old Gatorface's unconventional design, I cannot extend the same courtesy to his compatriot. Stryka, you octorock looking bitch, you have one of the goofiest designs in all the Transformers. How are you both overly swole and gangly as fuck at the same time? It is well documented that I'm a fan of more female Cybertronians and Cybertronian body types that aren't conventionally heroic. But this just ain't it, Chief. She doesn't even get a cool head, she looks like a Japanese depiction of an octopus. I don't know why they think octopuses look like this, but here's a Pokemon proving that they do. And what even is her alt mode? It's just a thing on wheels. I love how her tires are made out of rubber, but they don't run on that part. Instead, they clearly ride on these metal rims that go around the actual tire part of the wheel. She has to ride like absolute ass. You've gotta be able to feel every atom of the road beneath you. Why does she have a separate tiny cockpit implying that she's massive when she's in fact the size of a small truck? Not even a big one, she's barely larger than an orangutan. I love how every depiction of her to come later threw out the whole skinny limbs bullshit and were just like, yeah, she's built like a tank and not like a goddamn confusing mess. Also, give her a damn face. Check out this picture by the amazing Spino. Look how much cooler she is with a face. What she had before does not count as a faceplate. Then you got Megatron's little assistant drone, who I only bring up to kill more time before I have to talk about... Anyways, yet another thing Megatron couldn't design right. The arcade called, they want their claw machines back, and this time in one piece. It's like he went, I know, I'm going to design an assistant who can't feasibly pick up anything without dropping it. That will be a huge help in my evil schemes. Give any of your creations useful arms, Megatron. Thrust has claw grabber hands too. Tankor has pinky thumbs. Obsidian has these wire fingers. Hell, Stryka actually has hands and they are encased in these useless arm scoops. This feels like some insane type of torture. You gave her hands and then made it so that way she couldn't use them because they're encased in kibble. Megatron, you could easily win this if you didn't keep sabotaging your own team on purpose. I suppose I put this off long enough. Time to talk about Noble. Ah, I see whatever dude designed this was a furry. And you know it was a dude because only men go, you know what, eight times more muscular than is reasonable. That's where sexy's at. You know what makes this super awkward? Is that for most of the character's runtime, he has the intelligence of an animal. And Night Scream absolutely had a thing for him. Look, I'm just saying, that dude was totally fucking that dog. Spoiler warning if you actually care about watching Beast Machines Blind. The next part is spoilers, spoilers that you can find annoyingly in the first sentence of the wiki. Hey assholes, don't put plot twists in the wiki summary paragraph! Skip to the time code on screen if you don't want spoilers. Then you have his savage form, which is just an absolute whole mess of what? I don't even know what I'm looking at here. This thing is so ugly and weird and none of it makes sense. Are these supposed to be beady little eyes or nostrils? So this is like a bastardized mutant version of Megatron's alt mode, right? Like, I get that. I can see how this is like all the components of his dragon mode. But can someone please explain to me where the fucking dog comes in? What part of Megatron's dragon alt mode turned him into a dog? Like, the dragon alt mode is separated into two halves, one half dragon alligator Gurgoth from Castlevania, and the other half swole Scooby-Doo. I have so many questions, not the least of which is, why were the showrunners horny for things not meant for human eyes? So yeah, these designs are abominations unto the Lord and they should be purged with fire. Also, the original Obsidian figure had a gun in a very distressing place. The sad thing is, after all the shit I just gave these characters, they are probably all the better, least eye-gouging designs of the whole show. This is one of those classic instances where an artist with a vision was given way too much power in the creative process. So, I still plan to come back and do a remake of the first part where I get better pictures and have new jokes, but for now, that concludes part two. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And, if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.